What's going on, filmmaking friends? It's your boy, Zach here. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about f-stops, also known as apertures, also known as bokeh, or that blurry thing in the background. We're gonna break down all the different aperture levels, everything from, let's say, an f-16, all the way down to an f-1.4, and maybe even look at a 0.9. Five. We're gonna talk about the values of each aperture level, what projects you should use them in, how can it enhance your storytelling, and actually what are some of the benefits as well as what are some of the cons. I'm Zach here from Premium Beat. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you guys is actually just a little bit of an example of the different f-stops, also known as apertures. Each one has a different look, flavor, and vibe, so what we're gonna be using is the Sigma 50 millimeter lens that goes all the way up to an f1.4 and all the way down to an f16. That way you can see the drastic difference. Okay, so as you guys can see, there is a big difference between something like an f1.4 to an f16. One shows a lot of stuff in focus, the other one, it's very blurry. So let's talk about, first of all, the f1.4, also known as sort of the go-to cinematic look, the very bokeh type style. Once lenses with a aperture of a 1.4, or even a 2.8 became a lot more available and accessible to independent filmmakers, people started using this quite often. And, and from personal opinion, I think it became very overused. Now. I'll say this right now, I love having an aperture of somewhere between 1.8 to 2.8. I think it looks very cinematic and beautiful, but like all cinematic things, and I've said this in previous videos before, if you overuse it, you lose its effect, and I think diversity is more important and more of a key player than any other element in filmmaking. Having a diverse range of themes, gear, tools within your toolkit are way more valuable than just using the one primarily. Let's talk a little bit about that very bokeh-y look, anywhere from an f1.4 to let's say a 2.8. This is a really great aperture to isolate the character that you're filming or object from the background, and it can make your audience a lot more focused in on what they're doing or what they're talking about. For instance, for these type of talking head videos, I actually like having more of a blurry background so you're focused in on me rather than what's going on within behind me. That's why I'm shooting this at about an f2.0 all the way up to an f1.8 and obviously adds a lot more depth within the image. But it also keeps you focused on what I'm talking about rather than you focusing on, let's say, the cactus lamp or the computer screen or anything else that's kind of happening behind me. When it comes to, let's say, a storytelling method, this can also create a layer of isolation within your character. Let's say you're working on a story where you want your character to sort of be within their own world. Maybe they feel claustrophobic, maybe they feel disattached from the world that's around them. Having a more shallow of depth of field can really help enhance that. It can also make it have a little bit more of a dreamy type vibe or maybe a nostalgic type flavor. On a music video that I shot for the band Safe As Houses, I actually used an aperture of 0.95, which is ridiculous, but I loved it. It gave it this very warm, nostalgic flavor and became very helpful when it came to filming in lower light situations. When you have an aperture that can go anywhere higher than an F4, you're really coming into a lot of benefits. With something like that Safe As Houses music video, I was able to light it with just a lamp post and not having to crank up my ISO in order to get like, let's say slow-mo or an able to film in a darker situation, I was literally able to just open up that f-stop to a 9.5 and get the look that I was wanting. Let's talk a little bit about the disadvantages of shooting with something anywhere from like an f4 to an f0.95. Focus is probably gonna be one of your key issues with this. If you're using something like manual focus and even autofocus, it's a lot harder to keep things sharp. Since you're dealing with a blurrier and shorter area of focal length and focus within your shot, you're gonna have to be a lot more precise or else you're gonna start getting that sort of raw indie 2013 film type flavor where everything just is in and out of focus which can sometimes be very cool if you're trying to achieve a dreamy type vibe but also as an audience member can start to feel very annoying and you just want things to be crisp. If you're dealing with something like manual focus or even autofocus and you're having a hard time keeping it sharp, maybe you shouldn't shoot at something with a lower number of an f-stop. Another area of benefit to shooting at, let's say, a shallower depth of field is when your production value on set isn't giving you what you want. 
I've been able to utilize it in locations that perhaps aren't holding the production value that I wanted. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to afford a production designer, or sometimes I've shot in locations that just don't look that pleasing on camera. When you shoot with a shallower depth of field, you're eliminating that background and making your audience just focused on the characters or object that you're capturing rather than all the details and knickknacks happening around in the background. And this is a great segue to shooting at something of a higher f-stop number where you want to show everything in focus. So let's transition over to talking about something like an f4 to an f16. I just came back from my trip to New Zealand and when I was there, I wanted everything to be in focus. I wanted to be able to see all the details, all the rocks of the landscapes that I was filming in. I wanted to be able to keep the mountains in focus while keeping the rocks in the foreground in focus. And how I was able to do that was I shot a lot of it at an F16. I took off my ND filter and I made sure that everything was in focus focus. This is how you're able to capture those beautiful wide landscape shots. You're also able to get your audience's attention for all of the things within the shot. I shot on my 16 millimeter and just got the details that I wanted. This also comes into advantage of, let's say you did have a really beautiful set in your movie and you wanted to get your audience's attention for all the details and knickknacks that you put within it, maybe shoot at a higher f-stop number because then you'll be able to capture it with that deeper depth of field. But what are the cons? Well, the cons are sometimes pretty bad. For the first part, um, doing a lot of travel filmmaking, when I've got to take off my lens and all that, when I got to take off my lens really quick and put on a new lens, I get dust particles on my sensor. And they're actually a lot more prominent when shooting at a higher f-stop number. So when I was down to that f16, you were able to see all some like specks and dust on my sensor and it was super annoying because basically your camera is focusing in deep. It can see everything. So you can see stuff that's up here and it can see stuff that's all the way down here, which does not work. Uh, when you're trying to film those nice wide shots and you got like a big black, it looks like a fly is on your lens. So keep that in mind is once you start showing everything in focus, that also shows the stuff that's in focus on your sensor, any dust particles on your lens, everything can be seen and can sometimes detract away from the moment. But with that being said about focus, Obviously the nice thing is, if let's say you're shooting manually or maybe you're filming a vlog and you're really scared about getting everything in focus, this will guarantee or at least ensure a lot better that what you're capturing will be in focus. You're not gonna get a super blurry thing because again, your focus is super deep and it's capturing pretty much everything within your shot. You're not gonna get that nice detracted background or bokeh that everyone loves. And that's about it, folks. That's kind of the basics of f-stops and apertures. I could go on and get in deeper about this, but those are the basics, base level things that you should know about using this. Again, diversity is very important and setting your aperture or f-stop to what you're filming or setting or the emotion that you're trying to convey is incredibly important. So I highly recommend catering to the message of your scene before the visuals or what you wanna to toy around with. So if you guys like what I was talking about, but didn't have your pen and paper or screen captures for a lot of stuff that I was talking about, that's okay. You guys can go over to the blog post that's on Premium Beeps, Premium Beeps. That's on Premium Beats website where I've broken down everything for you guys, made it into a nice digestible blog post. And if you guys like that content and want to take a look at some more, you can hit that subscribe button or take a look at all the other articles that are on Premium Beats blog post. There's some really great content there from some of my favorite creators online. So check out all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any comments, concerns, or questions, or I don't know what else is happening in your head, write that in the comment section below. I'll be sure to read it. But as always, keep making some great stuff and I will see you guys in another video. Take care.